Coming up on my Alta News this morning, a West Virginia woman describes what she saw as a fire near her home leaves a restaurant in ruin. And a Kentucky woman severely injured while enjoying some time out on the water uses her trauma to help heal others. Dedicated to Eastern and Southern Kentucky, this is WYMT Mountain News This Morning. Good morning. It's Tuesday, 531. I'm Dakota Makris. Thanks for joining us this morning. And let's take it over to Brandon for a look at our forecast. And Brandon, just like how you are, you know, repeating the same forecast over and over, I always feel like I just say the same thing every morning. Good morning, 531. <laughs> Thanks for joining us. Well, it's different Dakota times. Makris. It's different That's times. That's true, but like I need to change it up or something. There maybe I'll go. start, maybe I'll say a different name each time. There you go. Just, I don't know. I'll, I'll come up with a different <laughs> you, you name. You figure it out. How about... I can say Dustin. can make my name Dustin. You could. Yeah, you there could. we go. There you go. We'll think about it. All right. Let's take a look at our forecast this morning, and it's fairly calm once again. It's going to get warmer today. It's already more sticky out there on the dew points. Corbin along I-75, 64 down that way. A little light traffic out there this morning at 530, just past 530. Temperatures 58, Clintwood, that's it. Everybody else is in the 60s from 61 in Jonesville to 68 in Jackson and Jacksboro this morning. A lot of mid to upper 60s. Prestonsburg and Pikeville at 67, 66 in Somerset, Moorhead and Logan. 64 from Hazard all the way down to Williamsburg and through Harlan. Several degrees warmer this morning in most spots except for Richmond. They are four degrees colder this morning, but everybody else at least two to about nine degrees warmer across the region. Your day planner heading up to about 86. It's going to be a warm day and a muggy day, so make sure you're taking your heat precautions. Dakota. All right, Brennan, thank you. One person is dead following a shooting in Pike County. Kentucky State Police troopers say the shooting happened in the Caney Creek area Monday. They say one person was arrested in connection with the case. Investigators did not release when or exactly the shooting happened. We are working to get more information. And Kentucky State Police is investigating a deadly shooting in Jackson County. Troopers say they were contacted just before 5 p.m. Sunday about a shooting outside a home on Kentucky 3445. Police reported that the initial investigation indicates that 42 year old Billy R. Isaacs and McKee was shot. Officers say he was pronounced dead at the scene by the Jackson County Coroner. Troopers say they arrested 54 year old Ricky G. McQueen, who was taken to the Jackson County Detention Center. McQueen is charged with murder. And officials with Kentucky State Police are asking you to keep an eye out for a missing woman from Wayne County. They say 45-year-old uh, Amy Marie Green was re reported missing on Sunday. She was last seen at a Walmart Super Center in Hopkinsville. She was diagnosed with a traumatic brain injury and is believed to be trying to get back to Monticello. If you see her or know where she might be, you are asked to contact Kentucky State Police or any local law enforcement agencies. And the first day of a parole hearing for a Western Kentucky school shooter was held yesterday. Michael Carnell is the first Kentucky school shooter eligible for parole and could be the first school shooter in the country to get it. Carnell shot and killed three people and injured five others at Heath High School in Paducah back in 1997. At that time, he got the maximum sentence, life in prison with the possibility of parole. Uh, this morning, victims uh, of, and family of three girls who were killed spoke in court. Him being released is, is a tragedy in itself. I, it's not fair for anybody that was involved. I believe that he should have to spend the rest of his life incarcerated. Nicole does not get a second chance. Why should he? The second part of Carnell's hearing will take place this morning at 9 o'clock. He will have the chance to make his case for parole to the judge during that part. A Lexington family is demanding answers after a boy's death in foster care. A seven-year-old boy died earlier this year in the care of a Louisville foster facility. The coroner ruled his death homicide by asphyxiation. The family has hired an attorney. Kelsey Soto takes a look at the case. For three years, J.C. on Terry and his two younger brothers have been in foster care as their mother battled addiction. Their grandfather desperately wanted to take custody but couldn't make it work and says he didn't have the means to do so. In July, the family got a call from Brooklawn, a foster care facility in Louisville, that J.C. on had been involved in an incident. He later died at Norton Children's Hospital. Last week, the coroner announced Jason's death is considered a homicide, citing positional asphyxiation. 
His grandfather says they learned about the cause of death ruling through an online media outlet. To read about it without knowing, we've been waiting for information for since July. And to find out about this way, and it's very hurtful. In a statement, Brooklawn says, in part, we are completely devastated by the unspeakable loss of a child in our care, J.C. on Terry. He should not have died on our watch. As protectors of Kentucky's most vulnerable children, we are dedicated to making sure it never happens again. They say they have made changes since the tragedy on July 17th, including dismissing two staff members who were involved in that incident, increasing training for those who provide direct care for children, and increased leadership presence and oversight in cottages to support their staff and children. JCON's mother, Dominique, says she wants to see justice served. I just think that something should happen to the two people that they found that caused my son not to be here anymore. The Cabinet for Health and Family Services says they've stopped placing children at the center for now. In Lexington, Kelsey Soto, WKYT. Well, the family has filed a lawsuit seeking a jury trial alleging wrongful death, negligence, and negligent hiring, training, supervision, and retention. Louisville Metro Police and the Cabinet for Health and Family Services are investigating the situation. We are learning a few more details about a deadly helicopter crash from earlier this month. The National Transportation Safety Board released a preliminary report on the crash. It states stormy weather was reported in the surrounding area prior to the crash. The pilot, David Stone of Louisville, Tennessee, bought the helicopter in St. Louis. He was taken to a taken a multi-leg flight to Knoxville, where it would be based. He took off from Sturgis, Kentucky, and aimed to land at Glasgow Airport. However, he never arrived. After he was reported missing, the wrecked helicopter and his body were found two days later in Mammoth Cave National Park. And a fire destroyed a Wayne County, West Virginia restaurant Sunday night. The dispatchers say the fire started a little before 8 p.m. at West Virginia Pizza Company. That's along Route 152, just south of Huntington. There were no injuries in the fire, and the case and the cause of the fire is still unknown. Connie Twill lives next door to the pizza company and says she felt helpless as she watched the fire roar inches away from her yard. I can't even explain it. I was so upset, scared. I shook all night. I, we stayed up on and off just to see if it comes back on the fire. But I was so upset. I, I called 911 over and over and love that. It was just crazy. Well, she says she's heartbroken for the owners. They own the restaurant for eight years. Well, last September, we told you the story of a Russell Springs woman who survived a terrible boating accident on Lake Cumberland on Labor Day weekend. Maria Fugenez was saved thanks to a mystery, uh, a mystery kayaker who she has since met. After the accident, she lost her leg. She was able to get a prosthetic leg just before the new year. She made a bucket list of items she and her new leg would tackle, and she has slowly been crossing them off. She has, re she has returned to the lake, not gone out on the water, but made peace with what happened, and she met her hero, the Ohio man who saved her life. Just the fact that I was able to see him and personally thank him for everything that he did that day, it was just amazing, and we've actually, we still keep in contact. Just four months after the incident, she enrolled in nursing school. She said being a nurse means using her own story and walking a difficult path to one day inspire those she will care for. And we are just days away from the official fall season, meaning it's almost pumpkin time. And this past weekend was the grand opening of Middle Springs Farm in Paris over in Bourbon County. And the owners say they are excited to see more people come out this fall with a great looking crop. They have a wide selection of pumpkins of all shapes and sizes, but they also have a sunflower filled corn maze and you can pick your own flowers. We're definitely hoping to see some big crowds, especially as it starts feeling more like fall weather instead of that hot summer weather we had this weekend. But we had a pretty good showing. We were pretty excited about it. Well, Middle Springs Farm is open on the weekends and on Fridays from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. and Sundays from noon to 6. We just had this morning, Rocket Man prepares to take the stage in Washington, D.C. during a special performance just outside the White House. The tropics continue to stay active this morning with several current or potential systems out in the Atlantic. I'll track them for you and tell you if they could have any impacts on us here in the mountains in about three minutes.